society and the way it treats leadership would have us believe that leaders are born. When you go into a new job, you are trained on all the technical aspects of that job. You are taught everything you need to know. But when you are moved into a management position, how many of you are actually trained on the principles of leadership? How many of you are actually taught how to lead other people? It doesn't happen in our society very often. We tend to take experiences we've had being under other leaders and find, okay, I really like this about this person, so I will adapt that. And I will never do that, so I will never do that. But leadership in itself is actually a whole field. There is a lot of studies and a lot of work that has been done to develop, teach people how to better their leadership skills and how to grow personally as a leader. It's just something for whatever reason we as a society don't take advantage of very often. I had the opportunity to go to Chicago in August to a conference called the Global Leadership Summit. And I'm going to talk today about something a man named Bill Hybels talked about, the four lenses of leadership. The first lens of leadership is the passion lens, the lens of passion. This is a, when for anybody that's passionate, a leader that is passionate about what they do and how they do it. They know that if they are passionate and motivated, the people underneath them will take their energy and also be passionate and motivated. It is something that is known, but it is hard to maintain. As a leader, you are the only one responsible for maintaining that level of motivation and passion. And everybody knows it's easy when, the, when things are going well and the momentum is there to keep things rolling and to keep the passion and motivation high. But when things get difficult or people get tired and burnt out, it is the responsibility of you as a leader to maintain that level. So you need to find something, a way as a leader to recharge your passion and your motivation. Whether it's taking a short vacation or spending time focusing on yourself. Whatever you personally need to do to maintain that level. It has been proven that motivated workers outperform unmotivated workers by as much as 40%, and that's a lot. The second lens of leadership is the shattered lenses. These are people that have only had negative leadership experiences and either just roll with it and assume that's what leadership is, it's just bad. It's normally, typically, a fear-based culture and the thing is, you can change. You don't, if you've only had negative leadership experiences, I'm sure everybody is in here who's had a negative leadership experience, someone over you that you just don't like. As you know, a negative leadership leaders are like a sponge, just suck the life out of any organization. Fear-based culture, but you can change it. It just takes a lot of time and a lot of work developing your people and creating environments where they can thrive. One of the speakers in this conference was a man named Alan Mullaly. He was the CEO of Boeing, and then was asked to come take over as the CEO of Ford when they were struggling. He walked into what was a fear-based culture. They, when he got there, he would have weekly meetings with all the department heads, and they would have a slide that they would put up. And it was supposed to be green, everything is good, yellow, there's problems, and red means the projection has stopped for some reason. For weeks, everything on everybody's chart in the room was green. That does not happen. Not everything is good in every department all the time. <laughs> he learned that if they had put anything yellow or red on their charts, they would be gone the next week. Oh. So, so nobody would say they had any problems. They would just try and work with their own team and try and fix the issue. Once he got them comfortable and created a spirit of comedy within the organization, <laughs> he was able to have them start showing where they had problems, and guess what happened? They had, were able to talk amongst each other. Some departments may have had the same problem and already had a solution. They were able to fix each other's problems when they were open and talking about it, and it increased their productivity exponentially. That is the kind of culture that needs to be in any organization. The third lens is the performance lens. These are performance-based, leaders. You have specific goals that are measurable. Everybody on your team knows the goals, knows what you need to do. Um, the most important thing about this is making sure people are aware of your goals, are aware of what they're doing well, what they need to improve, the status of the goals. You need to be constantly tweaking your goals and your 
motivation so they know where you stand. That is the biggest part of doing this. If you have your own goals but your people don't know what they are, where, how you're doing on that, then you're not going to get very far. The military is actually, surprisingly, a very good uh, example of this. They, from the top down, the top leader down, every quarter, every single person is evaluated by their supervisor. And they are told the goals of the unit, what they should be focusing on for that quarter, how they've been doing, what they need to improve upon, every single person, every quarter. And every year, they receive an actual evaluation that goes in their record. This is a great way to maintain, make sure everybody in the unit is on the same page, make sure that everybody knows what's expected of them, and this helps create that performance-based atmosphere. The fourth lens of leadership is not really a way to see leadership, but it's something you should do as a leader periodically. It is called the legacy lens. Everybody needs to take time, occasionally, not very often, and look back on what you have done and where you have come. Um, what kind of legacy did you want to leave for your family? If you were gone tomorrow, what would people say? What would people think? What do you want them to say? What do you want to be known for? You need to have that in the back of your mind so it's something you can continually work on as you grow and as you develop and go into things in the rest of your life. If you're passionate about children or passionate about the homeless, take time to do those things. If you want to be a philanthropist, do it. If you want to be known for your work, then go for it. If you want your family to say certain things about you, then make sure you work toward those goals. That is a very important part of being a leader. Leadership in general is so important to our daily lives, but it is something we do not focus on very often. I challenge you to take a little bit of time and Look at your own leadership skills and your past, and maybe put, set some side, time aside for personal development and just see how you can grow as a leader. <laughs>